welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your transformation guru, Samya Bano. Are you overcoming big challenges in your life? Do you want to transform the world? Is fear holding you back from taking the bold action you need to create massive positive change? If so, Keep listening and transform that fear into freedom. I am launching a new campaign. Hashtag happiness tips for POTUS. That's hashtag happiness tips for President of the United States. And I'm launching this campaign because from everything that I've been hearing in the news... I have been growing increasingly concerned that our president is struggling with his happiness and inner peace. Look, to be the leader of the free world, to be the president of the United States is a challenging and stressful job for anyone. And so it's not surprising that our current president is also feeling that stress and the challenge. And as he's dealing with that stress, as he's dealing with the challenge of the job, of this position of being the president of the United States, that it's compromising his happiness and inner peace. So I want to do what I can to help him achieve more inner peace and happiness. And not only achieve more inner peace and happiness, but to achieve control over his inner peace and happiness. The same kind and level of control that I have been able to achieve. You may know that I am a survivor of child sexual abuse. I survived that child sexual abuse when I was around eight years old. And in the aftermath of surviving that abuse, I really struggled with my inner peace. I really struggled with my happiness. In fact, the next 20 years of my life were focused on the struggle to regain my inner peace and happiness. Now the good news is that over the course of those 20 years, I had many ups and downs, but I was constantly learning. I was focused on learning. I wanted to learn how to be happy, how to regain my inner peace, and maintain it and grow in it and I was not only learning how to do this I was applying what I was learning and so by practicing what what I now teach as a happiness expert I have been able to actually eliminate suffering from my life I am now living a life where I am in control of my inner peace and my happiness. I am able to choose to be happy regardless of circumstances and so can you. It really is a skill that you can learn just as I learned it. And so from that place of wanting to um, share with you what I've learned for myself. And, and look, you may be saying, why? Why do you want to share with me what you have learned? It's because, look, I'm a Muslim. And one of the most fundamental values that I have learned as a Muslim is that I am not a true believer in Islam unless I love for you what I love for myself. And what I love for myself most of all is to live 
in control of my happiness, to live in control of my inner peace and to be able to experience it regardless of circumstances and to be able to grow deeper and deeper and deeper in that experience of inner peace and happiness and joy every day. So that is what I also love for you. And so let me share with you the very first happiness steps. The very first happiness step to achieve this kind of control over your inner peace and happiness is to love yourself fully. Love yourself fully. When you love yourself fully, you know you are enough. And when you know you are enough, then you do not need others to be constantly validating your goodness or your competence or whatever else it is that you need validated about yourself. Look, to love and be loved is one of our most fundamental human needs. We all share this need to love and be loved, to care and be cared for. And in order to meet this need, we have to start with loving ourselves first and loving ourselves fully. Because when we don't love ourselves fully, it doesn't matter how much other people love us, how much other people show us respect and caring. It will never be enough until we love ourselves fully first. I can give you an analogy. Imagine that our need to love and be loved is like a pit. In fact, it may even be an infinitely deep pit. So no matter how much other people pour in their love, their caring, their respect into the, that pit of our need for love and care, that pit will never be filled. Never. Because that pit is infinitely deep and it cannot, cannot, never ever be completely filled by the love and care other people give us. Never ever. And that is why, you see, so many people find themselves constantly chasing and craving for more. More love, more respect, more recognition. It doesn't matter how much you get. Even if you are the President of the United States, all the love you get as the President of the United States, all the respect you get as the President of the United States, it may not be enough to fulfill that need. Why? Because that is actually not a substance. That is not a thing that can fill that pit. It just dissolves and it disappears as it were, when it goes into that pit. There is one thing though, and this is the good news, the very good news. There is one thing that can fill that deep pit, that deep need to love and be loved, to care and be cared for. There is one thing that can fill it, that can fill it completely. So then you don't have any more craving for more and that is self-love that is self-care the more you love yourself the more you care for yourself the more you're able to fill that pit that deep need that we all have to love and be loved to care and be cared for and you can fill it fill it completely all the way to the surface 
with your own self-love and your own self-care. And the truth is, that's the only kind of love and the only kind of care that can fill that pit, that need that you have for being loved and for being cared for. So love yourself first and love yourself fully. Love yourself even more. Fill that pit all the way to the surface. And then, wow, when you receive even more love from other people, it's like the icing on the cake. It enhances your life even more and helps you to achieve heights that you could never achieve on your own. So that is the true value of receiving love from other people is that once we have filled that pit and filled it with our own self-love and self-care, then for we can still keep growing. We can now grow above the surface. And the love and care other people give us helps us to achieve that growth above the surface now that the pit has been filled. So we do need other people's love, but self-love has to come first. I'll give you uh, an example from my real life of when I recognize this lesson, this deep need that we have for self-love and how that is the only thing that can truly fulfill the need that we have to love and be loved, to care and be cared for. I remember when I was a teenager at this, uh, by this point in time, I was a teenager and uh, on this occasion I got triggered some memories of the child sexual abuse were triggered and I found myself crying and I couldn't stop crying from the hurt and the pain that was brought up by those painful memories of the child sexual abuse. And my mom saw me crying and she came and she enveloped me in a, in a hug. It was a loving, loving hug. And she meant her intention and her will was to shower me, to envelop me with her love completely and absolutely, to comfort me and to care for me. But all I could think of, even as my mom enveloped me in that loving, caring hug, was that if my mom knew the darkness that had enveloped my heart, the hate, the anger, the shame, the guilt, that she wouldn't be able to love me because I couldn't love myself. I hated all those parts of me, that anger, that hate, that shame, that guilt, made made it impossible for me to love myself uh, in that moment. And because I couldn't even love myself, I couldn't believe that anyone else could love me with all that darkness inside of me. I just couldn't believe it. And because I couldn't believe that someone could love that darkness, love me with that darkness... I couldn't accept that love. I couldn't accept that caring. Uh, I couldn't allow it to comfort me as it could have comforted me if I had loved myself, if I had accepted my own darkness. And so it is for you because the secrets of how to be happy, the fundamental principles and rules that govern our ability to be happy as humans are the same for you and for me. So, again, the very first happiness step for 
POTUS is to love yourself fully, to love yourself even more. Know that you are enough and then you will not need other people to validate your goodness. Now, if you're wondering how you can actually love yourself even more, well, we are going to talk about that in the upcoming Happiness Steps for POTUS. So stay tuned, and until we connect next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.